Hey everybody, my name is Matt Vogel. I'm a music photographer and I wanted to make this video to kind of do a walkthrough of my editing process, how I come up with my edits for my live concert photos and my presets that I use on all my work. I've tried to explain it in the past, but I don't think I've done a very good job and I've done it in written form. So I figured a video might be a little more helpful. So basically what I'm gonna go through today is just really quickly the process that I go through editing a photo from start to finish. I have a photo here that I wanted to start with today. Uh, this is of a band called Lydia. This I took this picture last year, but I'm going to start from scratch on this one and go through this process uh, one step at a time. I think I'm going to start with this photo by going a little warm and see how this turns out. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my color temperature up. 8600 seems fine. Let's do that. I'm going to boost my exposure just a touch to kind of get some more detail and see what I'm working with there in the background. Um, so I'm gonna bring my contrast up to 42 or so, that sounds good. Next thing I do is I usually bring my highlights down. It kind of even sings out a little bit. I don't want my brights to get too bright. I wanna like retain some good dynamic range, but I don't want it to be flat. So I wanna bring it down, bring the highlights down to maybe negative 57, that looks fine for now. Next I'm gonna do my shadows here. Uh, I'll probably actually just leave these as it is right now. Uh, I'm gonna bring my whites down just a tiny bit, negative 20 or so, just to kind of get rid of any like super, super bright spots where it may have been clipping. I'm gonna bring my blacks maybe just up just a touch. Basically do nothing with that for now. Next up, I'm gonna work on my clarity. This is a slider that is like often debated. Some people hate it, some people love it some people love it too much i definitely use it i don't know if i overuse it maybe some people think that i'm not sure i try not to make it apparent but basically what this slider does is it kind of creates like micro contrast uh within small areas so you can see when it's all the way up i mean it doesn't look terrible in this photo in some places it does down by the mic cords and stuff you can see where it's it doesn't look excellent but if you use it in moderation I think it can be a useful tool. So I'm gonna bring it up to, I don't know, let's say 40, 42, that sounds fine. One thing I do to get my colors in my photos, I like saturation, but I don't like oversaturation. So how I handle colors a lot of times is in the curves tool, um, which we're gonna use next. I take my vibrance up just a little bit, up to maybe plus 26, that sounds fine. And I'll actually knock my saturation down a little bit. Maybe negative 36, that seems good. A good place to start. And I'm gonna fine tune my colors a little bit more. So let's start with our RGB curve. An S curve is kind of like a standard standard thing for adding a bit of contrast to a photo. Uh, I'm sure some people are probably familiar with the concept. Next I'm gonna to go to red. I, I did a little S curve on my RGB uh, there. And now I'm gonna to go to red. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of an S curve here too but I don't want my highlights to be too red. I just want them to have just a tiny touch of warmth in there. Let's see, I'm gonna do green next. And on my green curve, I'm also gonna do a little bit of an S curve, kind of introducing some more contrast in here. I like adding a little bit of red back in these shadows, but not too much. And just a tiny bit of green to even out the red uh, in the highlights. Next up is blue. I'm, I want this image to be warm. So this is where I'm gonna make that happen, is in this blue curve. If I go this way, I'm gonna get blue. If I go this way, I'm gonna get yellow and orange. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna add warmth in the shadows here. I like that. I'm not gonna do an S curve because if I go and bring my highlights up like this, then I'm getting some like cooler colors in the highlights and I'm not crazy about that so it kind of just feels off kind of keep this down below the diagonal line there and add a little bit of yellow in my highlights so that looks pretty good to me as far as curves I really like the colors that I have going on here um, I like a lot about this image actually I'm pretty happy with it uh, looking at it now I think it might be just a touch too green so I'm gonna go back in my green channel here and 
Yeah, just bring bring the shadows down just a little bit more. That looks good to me. Um, I think I feel pretty good about this. The next thing I usually do is I actually enable profile corrections. It's not doing much on this photo. You can obviously see where it affects the vignetting around the corners there. I usually turn that off. I kind of like the vignetting that you get from a full frame camera. In this case, there's not much distortion. You can see when I turn it on and off, there's really nothing going on there. That's because this is on a 7200 lens. I, I shot this at 90 millimeters, you can see up here. So at that focal length, there's not a ton of distortion to really correct. Taking that vignetting and uh, keeping that in there is something that I usually do on most of my photos. You can see where I, I kind of have like black blacks here. Uh, and in, in the lights and the highlights and everything, you can see a good bit of noise. So I'm going to just add a little bit of fake grain in here in Lightroom. Uh, it's kind of give those blacks a texture so it doesn't just go from grainy to dropping off completely. It's kind of a subtle thing, but uh, you can definitely notice the difference. Finally, uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I noticed this guy down here. There's a guy holding up a camera. It's a little bit distracting. Also down here, you know, there's all these cords. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a graduated filter here. I'm going to even everything out. I'm actually going to take the clarity down a little bit. That's just going to kind of flatten out that area. I'm going to knock the exposure down a little bit. Take my highlights down a little bit. I don't want that area to completely go away, but I want it to be less distracting. So I think that filter kind of did the trick of what I was looking for. Looking at this now, I think I just wanted a touch warmer, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust my color temperature a little bit. That looks awesome to me. I really like that. I'm going to crop it now. It looks like Leighton is pretty centered, but it looks like there's a little bit of room for improvement in this composition. That looks good right there. Just bring it in on him just a tiny bit. I'm going to straighten it just a, a notch. It looks like it's just ever so slightly off kilter. Perfect. That looks great to me. That's about it. That's about all I would say I would do on this image. If I really was getting nitpicky and I was sending this to print or something, I would take it in Photoshop and I would remove, uh, say, this water bottle, maybe this towel. I don't know. There's not too much. I would probably take more time in Photoshop and remove this camera. But for what it is right now, for the purpose of, of this, I would keep this as is and I'd be happy delivering this image to a client. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it or found it a little bit helpful. Let me know if you liked it because then I'll do more. And also let me know if you didn't like it because then I won't. All right, see you next time. Thanks.